So you might hear people refer to our current system of accounting as double entry accounting. You might wonder what that means and uh, double entry accounting is something that goes all the way back uh, to the 15th century and perhaps even earlier. It was something that was used by Italian merchants at that, at that time. And so what double entry accounting is, is basically saying for each entry we make, there's a corresponding entry so that our basic accounting equation always remains equal, right? We always want the left side to equal the right side. And so this is something that might be a little bit easier uh, to, to kind of illustrate uh, in, in principle. So, so let's think about uh, an example transaction here. So let's say that you that you have a company or a business and you you buy office supplies buy oh that's a terrible b buy supplies for a hundred dollars cash so let let's think about what's happening here so we're buying supplies what are supplies well supplies are an asset right supplies are an asset so we talked about in our previous video assets increase with the debit so we're going to make a journal entry, supplies, and this I'm just going to put in parentheses, this is a debit. So that supplies is going to go up by 100, it increases with a debit. Okay, But there's the thing, so if that was the only thing that happened here, if that was the only thing we'd record, we'd have the assets going up by 100. Now this side would have more than this side, right? And then it wouldn't balance. The, it would no longer be equal. So what we need to do is we need to have a second corresponding uh, entry, and that's the double entry that we're talking about. So there's here's one entry, but we have to have a second one. And well, what else is happening here? Well, we're we're increasing supplies, but we're also decreasing our cash. So the corresponding entry to make this a double entry, we've got cash, and now that's going down. Right, and what happens? Well, if an asset increases with a debit, then it's going to decrease with a credit. And so we're going to credit cash for 100. Notice that it's been indented as credits are. Uh, so, so that's what's going on here, right? We've basically got an increase of 100 for the supplies, but a decrease of 100 uh, for the, for the cash going out for that asset leaving. So ultimately, if you add 100 and you subtract 100, well, the net result is zero. Uh, so there's nothing that's going to change the fact that this equation is equal. So that's that's great. That's what we want. We've got two entries here. Uh, and the, the main thing is that this side, this column, the debits, equals the credits. Now, let's think about this. What if we didn't buy supplies for $100 cash? Uh, but we instead purchase them on credit. So let's let's think about how that would turn out. Well, okay, so we'll have a different example. So buy supplies for a hundred dollars on credit. So you can probably already think about what what's going to happen here. What this journal entry is going to look like. Well, we know that we're still adding hundred dollars of supplies right so we're still going to have a debit of supplies right that's going to be a hundred I'm just going to leave out this debit here because I think you understand now that that's just something I put there uh, you know in, in practice you wouldn't write that every time so we've got a, a debit to supplies of a hundred but now we need that second entry we need that entry to make things balance right we've got a hundred over here we need something over here that uh, will add up to a hundred. So what's that going to be? Well, now we're purchasing on credit. Now, what what happens when you purchase something on credit? Well, you've got a liability, right? You're not paying cash. Uh, you're actually incurring a liability. You're saying, okay, look, I'm going to pay you at a later date. And so that liability, we call that accounts payable. Right? Accounts payable. Now, since this is on the right-hand side of this equation, remember that we said credit uh, is synonymous with right. And liabilities is on the right-hand side. Accounts payable is a liability. So accounts payable is going to increase with a credit of $100. So what we've had, so before, we actually had the assets going up by 100 
and then we had the assets going down by 100, so there was no effect, right? But now we've got something different, right? Now we see that the supplies, okay, so that's, that's, that's an asset. That's going to go up by 100. But now since we're not paying cash, we're actually incurring a liability, accounts payable, right? So now what's going to happen is the liabilities are going to go up by 100. So if you add 100 to the left side and you add 100 to the right side, then the equation will still be equal. That pres preserves our basic accounting equation. So just remember, with double entry accounting, what we're saying is that when we have any kind of, of transaction, any kind of economic event that needs to be recorded financially, uh, we're, going to have, uh, we're going to have a situation where we need to make not just one entry and say, yeah, we've got some supplies now, but there's going to be a, a corresponding entry or entries that makes it so that the left side, the debits, equals the credits and that this equation always balances. That's double entry accounting.